In this video, I will be discussing about graph coloring. So the goal of graph coloring is that we have to color the vertices of a graph in such a manner that no two adjacent vertices are colored using the same color. So basically we can say that for every edge that is present in the graph, both the vertices should be colored using a different color. So if this vertex is colored red, then the other vertex should not be red. Let's see an example of this. So we have this graph which has 10 vertices and if we color this graph, one of the graphs that we can get is on the right side. So if we pick any edge of this graph, let's say AB, we can see that A and B are colored using different colors. If we pick AF, both are of different colors. So if you pick any edge of the graph, both the vertices of that edge will be of different color. So that is what we mean by graph coloring. So this is also known as vertex coloring. Now in graph coloring, we have three categories of problems that are possible. So let's see what are those categories. So all the categories satisfy the basic condition that no two adjacent vertices are colored using the same color. The first category of problem that we have is M coloring decision problem. So in these type of problems, either we could be given a set of colors or we could be given value of M. So if M is equal to three, it implies that we have three colors and we have to check that whether this graph can be colored with three colors or not. So the return value will be a bool, either true or false. Now coming to the next category of problem, M coloring permutation problem. So in this also, we are given a graph and a set of colors and we have to find out the number of ways to color the graph using the provided set of colors. So if we are given value of m equal to 3, so we have to check how many different combinations are possible in which we can color this graph. And the last category that we have is m coloring optimization problem. So in this problem, we are given a graph and we have to find out the number of colors that are required to color the graph. So basically here we have to find the minimum value for m. So all the graph coloring problems can be categorized into these three types. So let's see one by one how we can solve these kind of problems. So we'll start with M coloring decision problem. So here our goal is to find out if the graph can be colored using the provided set of colors or not. So here we'll be given the value for M. So the data structure that we would require here is a color array, which we will initialize to zero for all the vertices. Then we have this function graph coloring, which returns a bool. So it accepts three parameters. First is the value for M, second is the color array, and third is the vertex. So we'll start the traversal from zero. So let's say we call GC. I'll just write the vertex number here because M and color will be the same and vertex will change. So we'll pass zero here. Then we check whether V is equal to the capital V. So capital V is the number of vertices. So basically here we are checking if all the vertices are colored, then we can return true. So here we're doing a for loop for C equal to one to M. And then we have a if condition if is valid. So this is valid condition. So I've not shown it here, but it basically checks that if the adjacent vertices of this vertex have the same color or not. So if any of the adjacent vertices of V have the same color, then we'll return a false. So let's do a dry run of this pseudo code with M equal to two. So basically here we are checking that this graph can be colored with two colors or not. So we'll first invoke this function graph coloring. So M is two, color is all zeros and vertex V is also zero. Then we have this condition. So V is zero and capital V is 10. So this condition is false. Then we have a for loop for C equal to one to M. So M here is two. So C will vary from one to two. So let's say C is equal to one. We check is valid and we pass C which is one color and the vertex zero. So initially none of the vertices are colored. So this condition will return true and then color of V is equal to C. So V is zero and C is one. So color of zero will be one. And then here we have a recursive call graph coloring to the vertex one. So this will call GC of one. So we come here in this if condition. So this condition is false. Then we come in this for loop for C equal to one to M. So C is again one. We check this is valid condition and we invoke is valid for C, which is one color and vertex V, which is also one. So if we come at vertex one, we see that the adjacent vertex is zero, which has the color one. So this is valid will return false. 
So this for loop continues and now c will be equal to 2. And then we again come in this if condition. So now we are calling is valid for c which is 2 color and 1. So adjacent vertices of 1 are 0, 6 and 2. But none of them is colored 2. So 1 will be colored 2. And after this we again call the graph coloring for v plus 1 which will be 2. We check this if condition. This is false. So we come in this for loop for c equal to 1 to m. So c will be initially 1. We check is valid. So we check the adjacent vertices for 2. So none of them is colored 1. So we can color vertex 2 with color 1. And after this we again call the graph coloring function with vertex 3. So now we call this function graph coloring with v equal to 3. So this condition is again false. We come here for c equal to 1 to m. So c is 1. We check the is valid. So is valid will return false for c equal to 1 because the adjacent vertex for 3 which is 2 has color 1. So c will change to 2 and is valid will be true for c equal to 2. So vertex 3 will be colored as 2. And then we'll call the graph coloring for v plus 1 which is 4. So now v is 4. We call for c equal to 1 to m. So c will be 1. We check is valid for 4. We check the adjacent vertices for 4. So one of the adjacent vertices for 4 which is 0 has color 1. So this is valid will return false. So we increment the c to 2. But now one of the adjacent vertices which is 3 is colored 2. So is valid is false for this also. So this for loop terminates and we return false from here. So in this backtracking whenever we are returning false we are resetting the value for color v. So we are doing this because so this combination is not possible so we have to explore the other combinations. So now at every step we will return false and we will keep coming back to the base condition which was gc0. So here we will reset everything to 0. So we did all this for c equal to 1. So when c will be 2 we will assign color 2 to vertex 0. So when we come to the next vertex 1 we will check whether one color is assigned to any adjacent vertex or not. So we will assign color 1 to the vertex 1. Then we come to vertex 2. We check that 1 is already assigned to the adjacent vertex. So we will assign color 2. Then we come to vertex 3. We see the color 2 is already assigned. So we assign color 1. So when we come to the vertex 4. We will see that adjacent vertex has already color 1. So we cannot assign color 1 to the vertex 4. And when we try to assign color 2. We will see that 0 already has color 2. So we cannot assign either color 1 or color 2. So it will return false. So it means for m equal to 2 graph coloring is not possible for this graph. So let's try this all for m equal to 3. So we'll start with gc0. So we check is valid. So currently none of them is colored. So we can assign color 1 to the vertex 0. Then from here we invoke gc for vertex 1. We come to 1. We check that color 1 is already assigned. So we can assign color 2 to the vertex 1. And we call gc2. When we come to 2, we check that the adjacent vertex has color 2. So we can assign color 1 to it. And from here we invoke gc3. For 3, color 1 is already assigned to 2. So we assign color 2 to the vertex 3. And we invoke gc4. When we come to 4, we check the color 1 and 2 are already assigned. So we assign color 3 to the vertex 4. And we call gc5. When we come to 5, we check the color 1 is assigned. So we assign color 2. And we invoke gc6. When we come to vertex 6, we check that color 1 is not assigned to any of the vertices. So we assign color 1 to vertex 6 and we invoke GC7. At 7, we see that color 1 is already assigned to the adjacent vertex, but color 2 is not assigned. So we assign color 2 to the vertex 7 and then we invoke GC8. When we come to vertex 8, we see that color 1 is already assigned and color 2 is already assigned. So we assign color 3 to the vertex 8 and then we invoke gc9. So when we come to vertex 9 we see that color 1 is already assigned to 6 and 5 is already assigned color 2. So we can assign color 3 to vertex 9 and we invoke gc10. When we come here to gc10 we check this if condition if v is equal to capital V. So v is now 10 and capital V is also 10. So it means all the vertices are colored so we will return true. True will be returned to the first calling function and at the end we will return true. 
So this means for m equal to 3, graph coloring is possible. So the color combinations we can see here, vertex 0 is colored 1, vertex 1 is colored 2, vertex 2 is colored 1. So this 1, 2, 3 color, just a notation. So if we change, let's say 1 to red, 2 to blue, 3 to green. So we can say here, this is red, this is blue, this is again red, this is red, this is blue. So this is just one of the valid possible colors that can be assigned. So here we have checked whether the graph coloring is possible or not using a M value. But how many different combinations can be there if we have to explore that, then that problem comes in the category of M coloring permutation problem. Now let's have a look at that problem. So this problem is M coloring permutation problem where we have to find the number of ways to color the graph using the provided set of colors. So the pseudocode is almost the same that we have seen for the M coloring decision problem. But here we are interested in printing the entire possible combinations that are there. So at every step, we are assigning a particular color. We are exploring whether that color is possible or not. And then we reset it so that we can assign a different color and do the same thing again. And at the end, when we reach here, if V is equal to capital V means all the graph is colored, we print the color array. So whenever we are encountering that we have colored all the vertices of the graph, we'll print that array and then we'll return from here. And in the backtracking step, we'll reset the color array and then again explore all the valid combinations that are possible. So in this manner, for a particular graph, we'll see all the valid combinations which are possible to color the graph. So I'm not writing down all the valid combinations because that will be huge. I will explain that in the code and we'll see how many different possible combinations are there. Now coming to the last category of problem, which is M coloring optimization problem. So here we have to find the minimum colors which are required to color the graph. So basically here we have to find the value for M. So there is one definition that you should know that the smallest number of colors that are required to color the graph is known as chromatic number. But the problem to find chromatic number for a given graph is NP complete. So there is no efficient algorithm that is possible to color the graph with a minimum number of colors. There are only approximate algos available. So there is one greedy algorithm that we'll discuss. So this algo doesn't guarantee to use minimum colors, but it guarantees an upper bound of the number of colors used. So it never uses more than D plus one colors where D is the maximum degree in the given graph. Now let's have a look at this greedy algorithm. So we again keep a vector colors and we have initialized all the colors to zero. So for each vertex in all the vertices, we assign vertex V the smallest possible color such that no conflict arises between V and its colored neighbors. And at the end, we return maximum of colors. So we start with the vertex zero. We see that no color is assigned to any of the vertices. So we assign color one to it. Then we come to the next vertex one. We see that the adjacent vertex has color one. So the smallest color that can be assigned to this vertex is two. Then we come to vertex two. We see that the adjacent neighbor has color two. So the smallest color that can be assigned to this vertex is one. Then we come to the next vertex, which is three. We see that the adjacent vertex has color one. So the smallest color that can be assigned to this vertex without any conflict is two. We come to vertex four. So the neighbors have color one and two. So the smallest color that is possible is three. Then we come to vertex five. So the neighbor has color one. Smallest that can be assigned to this is two. We come to six. So smallest that can be assigned is one. We come to seven, smallest that can be assigned is one. We come to eight, so we see here, so one is assigned to seven and two is assigned to five. So we have to assign three to this. And then we come to nine, we see that one is assigned to six and two is assigned to three. So we'll assign three to this. So once all the graph is colored, so we'll return maximum of all the colors possible. So if we check the maximum for this array, so the maximum is three. So the number of colors required to color this graph is three. So that is how the greedy algorithm works. So once we have seen all the different categories of problem, let's have a look at how we can implement them in C++. All the code that I'll be showing is available in my GitHub repository, link of which is available here and as well as in the description. So let's have a look at the first category of problem, which is the M coloring decision problem. So I've taken the same example as we have discussed. So vertex V is 10. I've taken the graph with 10 vertices and I've added all the edges. So there is an edge from 0 to 1, an edge from 0 to 4, an edge from 0 to 5. So in this way, I've added all the edges. And then I'm calling this function graph coloring. I'm passing the graph, the empty color vector in which all the colors are initialized to 0. The value for M 
the start vertex 0 and the total number of vertices capital V. So let's have a look at this graph coloring function. So as we have seen in the pseudo code, first we have the condition if all the vertices are colored, we return true. Then we have a for loop which we iterate from c equal to 1 to m. So we are trying all the possible colors that are there. Then we check if this color is valid. If it is valid, then we assign that color and we recursively call the graph coloring for the next vertex v plus 1. And at the end we backtrack by resetting the color. And in this is valid, we check all the adjacent nodes for that vertex. If color is the same, we return false. If the color is different, we return true. So in this manner, we check whether a coloring can be possible for the given value of m or not. So let's try to run this and see what is the output. So like we saw that coloring is not possible using two colors. So we return zero, which is false. And coloring is possible with three colors. So we return one, which is true. So now let's have a look at the second category of problem, which was the M coloring permutation problem. So here it is similar. We create the graph and we create the color vector and we pass it to the graph coloring function. So there are two things different here. First is the return value is void instead of bool. Second is when all the vertices are colored. So V is equal to capital V. So instead of just returning, we print the color vector and everything else is the same. So let's have a look at the output of this program. So we can see valid permutations using two color. So we do not get any permutations because it is not possible for valid permutations for three colors. So we see these many permutations which are possible. So now let's have a look at the last category of problem, which is the M coloring optimization problem. So this part remains the same. We create the graph and we pass it to the graph coloring function. In the graph coloring function, I've created this color vector. I've initialized all the colors to minus one. And for the vertex zero, I've initialized the color to one. Then I create a vector already assigned in which I'm assigning what are the colors which are already assigned to the adjacent vertices. So I traverse from vertex one to all the vertices and I fill this already assigned vector to false because none of the color is assigned to any of the vertices. Then I traverse all the adjacent nodes for this vertex and I check which of the color is assigned and I assign that color in this already assigned vector. And then I check what is the first available color which is not assigned. So whichever color I find here, I assign it to the vertex. And then I again iterate for the next vertex I again reset this already assigned to false and I find the first available color which is there. So at every step I'm finding the minimum color that can be assigned to the vertex. And at the end I simply check what was the maximum color that was assigned and I returned that. So let's have a look at the output of this program. So here I can see that vertex 0 is assigned color 1, vertex 1 is assigned color 2. So the number of colors that are required are 3. So once we have seen all the different categories of problems, Let's have a look at what are the applications of this graph coloring. So the first application that is there is in making schedule or timetable. Let's say we have certain exams and we have some students. So the students have taken various subjects for which we have to conduct the exams. So the problem is how do we schedule the exams so that no two exams with a common student are scheduled at the same time. So this problem can be represented as a graph where every vertex can be thought of as a subject and an edge between two vertices can be thought of as a student. So we have to assign different colors so that there is a no common student who has both the exams on the same time. Second is map coloring. So if you're given a map of a country and you have various states in it and you have to color it. So we have to color in such a manner that no two adjoining states have the same color. So we can use this algorithm to find out what are the minimum number of colors which are required to color the map of the country. And the third important application that we have here is bipartite graph. So a bipartite graph is a graph where vertices can be divided into two independent sets, let's say u and v. So where every edge in the graph is such that one of the vertices lies in the set u and the other vertices lies in the set v or vice versa. So if you have to find out whether the given graph is bipartite or not, we can simply check whether the graph can be colored using two colors or not. So if it is two colorable, it would mean that the graph is bipartite. So these were some of the important applications of graph coloring. So that was all for this video. If you have any feedback or suggestions, please leave in the comment box below. And if you like my content, please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me to make more such content. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar signing off.